Hello and welcome to the Skyward channel. Today, we're getting back to the budget end series of gaming PCs for 2017. And we're gonna start off that strong with this $400 gaming PC, which is gonna be one of my fastest gaming PCs up to date. Now, I'm pretty sure as we've all seen, some of the new Cappy Lake i5 and i7 processors were a bit of a disappointment. They didn't really improve upon Skylake, but in the good news, the Cappy Lake architecture change actually helped benefit some of the lower end processors because of that increased clock speed and efficiency that Cappy Lake brings. And that's gonna make a really huge difference on those lower end processors that are in the 3.0 gigahertz range. Cause as we all know, there's a bigger difference in frame rate between a 3.0 gigahertz processor versus like a 3.7 gigahertz processor than like a 4.0 versus a 4.7. So Cappy Lake has had kind of a beneficial impact on the budget end series of CPU. So that's why we're gonna go with kind of like an i3 processor but it's not an i3 processor and it's like $40 cheaper so actually I'm pretty excited to bring you guys this PC build because it's gonna be using a one-of-a-kind processor that we haven't really seen yet so anyways let's get into the build But real quick, it's still the month of January and the giveaway for the Habit 380L is still going on. And all you need to do is like this video, be sure you're subscribed, click the bell notification button and be sure to comment down below so I can choose the winner at the end of this month or at the beginning at this month, depending on the video schedule. And I am aiming for this to be a worldwide giveaway. But obviously, I mean, like if you live in a remote island in the middle of the Pacific, I don't think I'm gonna ship this to you, but I'm gonna try my hardest to get this to anyone who wins. So be sure to enter and we'll see who wins. I wanna give you guys the FPS estimates of this gaming PC. And to do that, rather than just spilling out random numbers that we kinda of just calculated off the top of our heads, we actually looked at similar systems to this on YouTube that had a similar CPU and the exact same GPU, since obviously this, the CPU in this build is very brand new. We don't think anyone really has the CPU out there right now. So we're gonna give you guys some pretty accurate estimates as to what this gaming PC can get on certain games based off of similar systems. So for the bench Marks for this PC, expect to get about on Overwatch at epic settings at 1080p, an average frame rate of 50 frames per second. On Battlefield 1 at high settings at 1080p, you're gonna get an average frame rate of 43 frames per second. And on Minecraft at a maxed out 1080p setting, you're gonna get above 150 FPS no matter what. And at GTA 5 at very high settings at 1080p, you're actually gonna get about 61 FPS. And on Rise of the Tomb Raider from high to medium settings, you're gonna get about 53 FPS at 1080p. And I have links for all those videos down in the description down below if you wanna check those out. So for the computer specs, we're gonna be starting off with an Intel Pentium G4560, which is a dual core Cavi Lake processor that is hyper threaded. Yes, this is the first ever Pentium lineup series in a long time that is going to be hyper threaded along with having physical cores, which is pretty awesome and brings some good benefits, not only just to a regular gaming PC, but to pretty much to any PC build in general. But also on top of that, it's running at 3.5 gigahertz, which is 0.2 gigahertz more than its predecessor, which was the G4400. And having this baby at 3.5 gigahertz is gonna be good because that's kind of at that beginning safe zone range for a gaming processor because 3.5 gigahertz is still a pretty good base clock speed for any gaming PC and anything below that it's a little bit questionable but 3.5 gigahertz is right on the money for the CPU and as for the motherboard this is going to be using a regular ASRock DGS micro ATX motherboard using the H1 1010 chipset this is going to be using 8 gigabytes of gel RAM that's running at 2133 megahertz that is dual channel so this RAM kit is good to go this also is going to be using a one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive, so there's nothing wrong there. This is going to be also using a overclocked GTX 1050 from MSI, which is great to see because this is actually running at 1.4 gigahertz to 1.5 gigahertz, so that's something pretty cool to see. And as for the mid tower, it's going to be using a regular deep cool Tesseract ATX mid tower, you know, just a regular ATX mid tower. And then finally, this is going to be using an EVGA 500 watt power supply. And yes, that is more wattage than what this system requires. However, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be upgrading from that GTX 1050 in the future, you know, if you wanna do that. 
And this extra wattage that the 500 watt power supply is gonna give you is gonna allow you to support any future graphics cards that are gonna be definitely eating up more wattage in the future. So those are the PC parts and that's gonna be totaling to $413, which is not too bad for a $400 system. So let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of this $400 gaming computer, starting off with the Pentium processor because it does have some changes to it that make it more beneficial for gaming, which is the higher increased clock count and the fact that it's hyper-threaded, which doesn't exactly help gaming, but there's some other beneficial reasons to having those two virtual cores to it that make it a quad-core virtual processor. But for the most part, it's basically a lower-clocked i3. If you look at the spec sheet between like an i3-7100 and a Pentium G4560, they're pretty much identical aside from TDP and the maximum speed that RAM can be overclocked to. It's just the Pentium is a lower clocked i3 processor since the Pentium, just like the i3, is hyper-threaded, even though both still are dual core processors. While hyper-threading isn't going to benefit you in gaming, it's not gonna give you any extra frames per second, it will be a nice low cost effective solution to people who wanna do any low scale rendering or editing. Like let's just say you wanna like put out a video on your YouTube channel that you upload like, you know, once in a while and you don't want to freak out if you don't have like, you know, an i5 processor, then you should feel comfortable rendering with this Pentium thanks to those extra two virtual cores since it's hyper threaded. So that should be nice if you wanted to do any casual low scale video editing. And also this is going to be using eight gigabytes of RAM in addition to the build also with the GTX 1050 and that Pentium and that GTX 1050 and eight gigabytes of RAM should be a very solid combination for running a lot of games. Now, yes, the system is going to run like the super crazy high-end games like Witcher 3 or Fallout 4, but the system should have a pretty easy time running a lot of the popular medium to moderate games, you know, like Overwatch, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or Dota 2, or any of those regular games. This PC shouldn't have a problem running those regular games. But regardless of all the great things I said about this Pentium processor, the con is that it's still a dual core processor in the end. And you will see some pretty dramatic FPS increases if you were to upgrade to say like an i5 processor or an i7 processor because still adding on those two extra physical cores is going to make a bigger difference than just having those two virtual cores of the hyper-threaded Pentium processor. So there's still that to keep into mind. You're still using a dual core processor in the end. And also one more thing to note is that the case in this build is pretty average. It's it's got average build quality and all that. It's not anything amazing by any means. And I like, if you were to go $30 more expensive on the case, you would be able to afford something nice like an NZXT S340. And those that has some pretty awesome build quality and great features, but the deep cool case in this build, like I said, it's average. It's gonna give you the looks and it's gonna give you the features that you need but it's build quality and just feel of it isn't going to be spectacular by any means. And on top of that, I believe there's only one case fan included in that case. And even though this is a low wattage, low heat system, it might be worth looking into getting like one or two extra case fans to help the overall cooling of this PC just to be good. And one more thing is that this PC does use the stock CPU cooler that came with the Pentium processor. So if you did wanna upgrade in the future, you would have to remove that and put in a brand new stock CPU cooler. But like I said, the pen team in this build is very low wattage because it is a Kaby Lake processor. So actually I wanna say you might even have, you might even not even have to like upgrade the CPU cooler that's on the pen team. You should be pretty fine with what's given for you. But yes, that is my $400 budget gaming PC build based off of the brand new Skylake Cappy Lake Pentium processor. And as usual, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe and all that. And this is the Scatterville channel signing out.